to the very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live. That's how we can charge that you profit from your time spent here with experts, either through the industry insight, information, or simply learning from them. And today we have Daniel Rao. He is a certified personal trainer and is now full-time online fitness coach, specializing in helping men sustainably lose weight without going to the gym. Welcome to the show, Daniel. Thanks a lot for having me. I'm excited to be here. You are welcome to the show, Daniel. You are welcome to India in this online form. And I'm sure not just in India, but a lot of people across the globe will benefit from what we are going to talk about. We'll be talking about how one can, uh, you know, lose fat easily at home. That's a very lucrative thing, a very important thing. A lot of people are trying to lose weight. In spite of going to the gym, they are not able to do that. And here you are talking about you know, fat at home. So, help us understand, you know, uh, Daniel, is, is losing weight so, is, uh, so easy? Help us understand in that. Let's start with this. Yes, uh, the audio isn't the best. I'm not sure if I heard you, but the reason why I chose losing weight, losing weight at home is because in 2020, when everything shut down, I could lo no longer go to the gym, but because... I was interested in health and fitness for over 10 years at that point. I was still able to get myself very good results. And I realized that many people that need the most help losing weight often hate going to the gym and they don't like to go to the gym. And I believe if you know what you're doing, if you have the right knowledge, you can get just as good results at home. You just need to follow the right plan. You just need to know how to do the right things. Right, absolutely, absolutely, Daniel. So help us understand then, Daniel. You know uh, that about a bit about yourself, so that you know people know about who exactly Daniel is, and they understand. Okay, uh, this is someone who they can listen to. No, I have told them about told the audience about you being a certified personal trainer and all. But it's better to tell a bit more about yourself, so that the audience can know who exactly they are listening. Definitely. So. I was born in Israel when I was six. My family and I, we moved to China. I grew up there. And I was the most picky eater on the planet. I ate nothing but McDonald's because I didn't like Chinese food from the age of six to 12. At the age of 12, I started playing basketball. And my brother convinced me that if I wanted to get better playing basketball, I should start eating healthier. And healthier is pretty much anything except what I did, because all I ate was chicken nuggets from McDonald's, nothing else. I was extremely picky. Uh, so I slowly started eating healthier foods. I started getting more interested in nutrition, trying different foods, and I improved my health slowly. And around the age of 17, I started working out more seriously, because I felt very confident while playing basketball but nowhere else. I did not feel that confidence translate into everyday life, into school, into social events, family events, things like that. And when I started working on my body, improving my fitness, I was more confident everywhere I went because unlike a basketball, I took my body with me everywhere I went. It's a more transferable skill. And because of that, I decided I want to be a personal trainer. I went to university in Canada for exercise nutrition to be a personal trainer. So I worked in a few gyms. Then in 2020, when everything shut down, I could no longer work in gyms. I worked at home, worked out at home, and started my online business helping people lose weight without going to the gym. Because at that point, going to the gym was not an option. But even now, many people and myself prefer to, prefer to not go to the gym because there's a lot of people, there's traffic, it's a hassle. If you, you can get the same results at home, it's not easier to remain consistent with it. Right, right. And moreover, going to the gym takes a bit of time. You've got to get dressed in that whole manner, then go out, and you know, a lot of things are associated with that. What better than doing things at home? So, in, in, uh, you know, in terms of losing weight, in terms of, you know, easy uh, fat loss, how does one get started with it? Let's understand this from an expert like you. So I like to start with what I call the easy wins. Things that take little time and little effort that 
help you lose weight. So as an example, whenever I'm talking on my phone, either to my parents or to a friend or to anyone, instead of sitting and talking on the phone, I'm always walk, walking and talking on the phone or moving around. The conversation is going to happen anyways, might as well move. It doesn't take time, it doesn't take effort, but I'm able to get more steps in without any extra time. Another example is I always have a water bottle within arm's reach because many people don't drink enough water and that causes them to be more hungry. So little small changes that don't take time allow you to lose weight. And once you do that, then you can go into the more difficult things such as working out at home or picking healthier food options. Right. So what sort of work? Yeah. Is it obviously sitting at home, being a couch potato will not help them lose weight? What exactly they should do in terms of losing weight? Or is it that there is a certain, you know, way of just, you know, doing less and gaining more? Not gaining weight, but gaining confidence, gaining other things, but losing weight and losing yes. fat. That's what I understand. So, if you know the chef Gordon Ramsay, I say Gordon Ramsay with one pan can make a better meal than the average person can with five pans because it's not about how much equipment you have, it's about knowing what to do. And if you know what to do, even with just your own body weight, with just a chill, you can be creative and create certain exercises. So as an example, instead of going to the gym and do a bench press, you can do push-ups. But if push-ups are too easy, you can do diamond push-ups, putting your hands close, that makes push-ups more difficult. But if you're overweight, push-ups are way too difficult, you can do knee push-ups, push-ups on your knees, and then you're able to go all the way, and it's something that you will be able to do. So no matter what fitness level you're at, no matter what equipment you have, if you have the right knowledge or you have somebody to help you create a plan, then you can be consistent no matter your fitness level, how much equipment you have, how much time you have, everything can be adjusted. Right, right. Now, let's uh, understand uh, the other part of this whole fat loss as well as weight loss. Is it only about, you know, doing some exercise? What about the importance of diet? Help us understand the importance of sleep as well. So that, you know, a wholesome part of the routine which people can follow even when at home, but are able to get the maximum output, maximum benefit for them just in terms of weight loss fashion. So I believe the thing people struggle with the most is cons consistency because the reality is you can do almost anything and, and get pretty good results as long as you're consistent with it. But many people struggle to be consistent. There's many people in January 1st, they create a news resolution. They say this year I'm going to lose weight. But two weeks after they fall off. And the reason they fall off is because what they did was way too difficult. People who never walk out, never eat healthy say, I'm going to the gym two hours every single day, seven days a week. I'm going to eat nothing but lettuce. I'm going to drink 17 bottles. They create something unrealistic that they cannot stick to. I think the best approach is to do the opposite of that. Start with something very small and build up slowly. So if all you do is walk 20 minutes two or three times a week, then the week after that you can walk 20 minutes and do knee push-ups. The week after that you can walk 20 minutes, do knee push-ups, then you can do wall slides or squats or cab raises, small little chances to increase the intensity. And right. I believe in terms of nutrition, people are too restrictive. They say, I will never eat donuts or sugar. I will only eat this. However, I believe if you can't stick with the diet for a decade, there's no point in doing it for a day because anybody can do anything to lose 10 kgs or 25 pounds. But if you want to sustain it, you have to take a much longer term approach in terms of what you're eating. Right, right. In terms of now, how would you just uh, look at that? Especially, you know, with a phone in hand, nowadays it becomes so difficult to sleep early. Even if you want to sleep, you yeah. sleep with a phone in hand and then, you know, it can take a lot of your time, even at night. That's a good question because 
I can't snap my fingers and make it so that the 25 or 26 hours in the day allow you to sleep for an extra hour or two. But what I can do is tell you a few tips to improve the quality of your sleep. So even if you can't sleep eight hours, you can only sleep six hours. If you improve the quality of your sleep, you'll still get the most out of it. And if you improve the quality of your sleep, you won't be as sleep deprived. So I, I would say there's three main things you can do to improve the, the quality of your sleep. Firstly, you want as dark as possible. So blackout curtains, eye mask, try to turn off all the lights. And secondly, you want cool room temperature. So around 65 degrees Fahrenheit, 19 degrees Celsius. You can have a thick blanket and a thin blanket. You can take a hot shower or bath before bed. Anything to cool down your body temperature. And the third one, which everyone struggles with, is low stimulation before bed. So you want to avoid technology. You want to avoid the news. You want to avoid heavy arguments. Instead, you want to meditate, journal, things of that nature. Right. Right, Daniel. Now, in terms of you talked about you know, people are facing this challenge of consistency in terms of wherever they are exercising or doing things for their, you know, better system. Why is it so? And uh, that consistency becomes a problem. Many people are achievers in other lines. Why, why does it become a problem when it comes to, you know, doing exercises or doing things something for their health? Help us understand how can they break this uh, this particular issue of consistency for themselves. Either being at home, even for a lot of people who are busy outside, you know, and some home, when, what time they come home, they will not also know about it because they have a busy work life. So how does this work? Consistency can be, you know, which is a big challenge, can be tackled. I believe a lot of we, a lot of people view have the wrong mindset. So I, I think the biggest mindset difference between somebody who's fit and somebody who's not fit is somebody who's fit views everything as a continuum. People that are unfit view things as binary, as in yes or no. So as an example, a fit person and an unfit person are both super busy. They have no time. And the plan was to work out for 30 minutes, but they only have 20 minutes. The unfit person will say, I don't have 30 minutes, I'm not going to work out. The fit person says, I don't have 30 minutes, but I have 20 minutes, so I'm going to work out for 20 minutes. So it's about doing whatever you can do. Also in regards to nutrition, the if you're in a place, if you're in a wedding and there's no healthy options, the unfit person says, well, there's no healthy options. I'm going to eat as much cake as I want. I'm going to eat more and more cake. That fit person says, well, there's no healthy options, but I can still make the best options of whatever is available. So I could have maybe a bit of cake, but I'll also try to eat more vegetables and things that are healthy that I enjoy. Right, right, Daniel. Now, in terms of, you know, a lot of young people, a lot of teens, kids are facing this uh, health, uh, weight issues, obesity issues. And including in your case, you said you used to like things a lot from McDonald's. A lot of people, young people, like it. Even I sometimes. But how do you take care of this habit, you know, when they, when you are young and not add to a thing, you know, when it becomes beyond a, uh, beyond the eating thing and it becomes a habit eating too much outside of this sort of food? How do you break that? What would you like to say? to these young people as well as you know parents so that they can inculcate a good habit that you'll have to leave at one point in time right so like everything a lot of people try to make a very drastic change very very fast and when people make a very drastic change they usually go back but if you are able to make a very small change gradually then you always win a lot of people say that they lack motivation but the reality is they lack tangible results if they are able to see the skill go down every single week they want to continue if people are able to see the clothes fit better every every single week they want to continue so it's not about thinking that you have to reach a certain point every single week just think what can i do today to be better than yesterday and the beautiful thing about weight loss is every single second 
you can decide to make a decision that will move you closer to your goals. So everyone can just walk more, can drink more water, can simply take a picture of what they're eating. Even though that's very simple, many people remember the salad they ate three days ago, but forget about the donut they ate two hours ago. So something as simple as simply taking a picture of what you eat will bring you more awareness of what you're actually eating. Because there's a huge gap of what people think they eat and what they actually eat. And if you take a picture, you will close that gap and be like, oh, that's why I gained weight. I forgot about the donut. Right, right. That's, that's, that's something you said. You said well, Daniel. There are a lot of people who travel. Even if they are doing regularly something, then they have to travel for work or any other thing. And that thing is lost. How, what would you like to tell those people who are you know who have to do a lot of travel, but they are also sticking to a routine. But when they travel, that routine is gone. And then why yeah. when they come back, it is very difficult to you know get down. They always think, okay, from tomorrow, from tomorrow, from tomorrow, and that tomorrow never comes. Definitely, I have clients that fly three times a week. Uh, I also travel quite a bit myself. I'm in an Airbnb right now, so it is more difficult, but it's definitely still possible. So the good news is, in regards to the workouts, exactly the same. Because I work out at home anyway, so it doesn't matter. Again, if you have the knowledge, if you know what to do, it doesn't matter where you are, you can work out. When it comes to travel, it's important to plan ahead in terms of what restaurant you're going to, what options you have. If you go to a gas station, there's, certain, there's usually beef jerky, there's usually protein powders, there's usually protein drinks. There's usually the same types of food so you can plan ahead and also airports there's usually some fast food places not the best options but you can always as an example instead of getting a burrito you can get like a bowl with meat and veggies and you can order double meat instead of ordering like a bunch of bread so small chains like that make all the difference simply avoiding soft drinks because they have a lot of calories and they're addicting make you just more hungry so Avoiding that is the key. And also, if you are flying, whenever you wait for the plane to board, instead of just sitting, stand and walk around. Move as much as possible. Because the time is going to pass anyways, you might as well move. You can always walk. Absolutely. Absolutely. But one has to be making sure that you are not walking in a manner that people get suspicious. <laughs> and yeah. uh, because a lot of people will then walk, start walking in there. Uh, at, at the airport. I'm just joking, you know. It's, it's a good suggestion, and people can walk yes, in well, a lot of places. You know, there are many, many places where you can continue with your, uh, with your uh, routine, whatever. So, there is much to understand about all these things, much to learn from you about these things, Daniel. So, for those people who want to know more about you, more about your online training, and those who want to get the training for themselves, what is the best way for them? Get in touch. I am most active on Twitter or X. You can find me at, at Daniel Raz underscore fit. I'm also Daniel Raz underscore fit on Facebook and Instagram, but I'm most active on Twitter or X. That's where I like to post the most. I My website is also Daniel Raz fit. So that's D A N I L R A Z F I T. And yeah, let me know if you're interested. We'll have a conversation. See if us working together makes sense, and I'll be happy to help you out. Wonderful, wonderful. With this, it's a wrap on this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live. Thank you so much indeed for joining us. Thanks a lot.